In this lesson, we're going to be talking about how to get listings of files. And we've looked previously at how I would do it on a graphical basis. And we've looked at the file explorer. And as I said earlier, this is pretty much the same as any other file explorer you're going to run across. We can go to home here and I can see all of the different directories that I've got. And I can click through, same as pretty much any other file explorer. Now, as I've mentioned previously, one of the real powers of Linux comes with the command line. And I can do something like an ls, and I get pretty much the same thing as I get with the file explorer that I had. And in this case, the way that I've got the shell set up is so that different types of files or different objects are actually colored differently. So you can see that in this case, my directories are colored blue. If I were to have an executable program, for example, then that would be a different color and so forth. This is just a pretty straightforward listing. I can get a number of different types of listings. If I were to get help, for example, I can see all of the different flags that I can use. And a pretty common one here is I could do an ls minus a, and that's really going to give me every file. Suddenly you see there's a number of files that weren't there before. These right here are called dot files. So you can see, for example, dot x authority. That's a dot file, and normally that won't show up in a file listing because it's considered kind of a system file or a system level file, and it's not one that would normally show up in a file listing. And in a place like where we are here with my home directory, then I've actually got a pretty large number of dot files. You can see the number of dot files because those are commonly, for example, configuration files like this one here. The dot bashrc is a configuration file. Dot dmrc, that's also a configuration file. And I've got all of these configuration files that are dot files. Now, you'll see what I don't have here is a listing of creation time, for example, or size. I could do an ls minus la, and that's going to give me a long listing in addition to all of them. And now I've got the permissions on the left-hand side here, and that's followed by the owner, which is the third column in. And then the group is the fourth column in. Then we've got the size, and that's followed by the date and time, and then, of course, the file name. Now I've got my listing of files, and I've got all of the details around them. And as I said, we can do some other things here, like I can do a sort, for example, and I could do human readable. So let's do a human readable listing. So if I did a minus LAH, Instead of the numbers that we had in the fifth column over, I have actually got something that may be a little bit more meaningful. So, for example, I've got 4K and I've got 3.6K. Rather than just a raw number, it actually breaks it down. If I had a big file here, you'd see like an M or a G, for example, for meg or gig. So that's human readable, and it translates some of the numbers into things that may make a little bit more sense to us immediately, rather than having to do the translation in our head. So I can get file listings, I can manipulate those file listings in a lot of different ways, and you'll see this probably a lot as we go forward as I continue to show things, particularly like permissions and the different settings that we can do on the files. I'm certainly going to be doing file listings to show you the results of those. So we'll keep talking about LS and some of the features and functions of doing file listings in the console or in the terminal.